But, you know, I get started with it. And, you know, it's an interesting thing about going after your dreams, y'all. Because we have in our brains that we're supposed to be equipped with the necessary tools or the necessary instruments or the necessary background to be successful. And a lot of people don't understand all of us wasn't born with a silver spoon in our mouth. All of us didn't come from wealth. All of us didn't come from privilege or resources. And you just got to make do with what God gave you. And one of the things that God gave all of us from day one is belief. And in my journey in this thing called life, I've come to understand that when you are stripped to the core, when you ain't got nothing, when you have not a dollar in the bank, you can still have belief. And I think about my own journey. And I go back to when I was coming up and I was trying to do my thing, knocking on doors, nobody would let me in. And I had to, this job working at a nursing home as a dishwasher. And when I was at that job, I washed those dishes like I was the best dishwasher in the Bronx. But whereas I was a good employee, I was a very, very bad bad employee at the same time real talk y'all because in my head as grateful as i was for that job i was bigger than a dishwasher i just believed something different and i remember walking in and out of that building every day and i used to have this boss and she loved like she loved that job and she wanted to make sure we was doing the best job humanly possible i'm like yo i'm washing dishes these dishes look clean don't they like, get off my back. But in my head, I was bigger than that place. I had belief. And although I showed up to work all the, on time, although I did what I was supposed to do, eventually I got fired because that same damn belief worked against me because I came in there and I was cocky. I was big-headed for that moment and got fired. But when I got fired, y'all, that's when some critical life lessons started to kick in and God really started to show me something because I was without a job. I was living on my own, sleeping in the house, couldn't afford a bed, actually had a mattress that was laying on the floor, no box ring, no, no bed frame. I'm just laying on the floor like, damn, where my next dollar gonna come from? And God just revealed to me, move forward. That's it. You don't have to know the play. You don't have to know the plan. Move forward. Like anatomically, biologically, look at the way I built you, Sean. Your eyes are facing that way. Your knees, when you bend them, they go that way. When you walk, you got, Sean, try walking backwards. And I'm thinking of all this stuff in my head. And I just said to myself, I got to keep moving forward. It didn't matter that I couldn't pay my rent at the time. It didn't matter that I didn't have nothing in my pocket. I didn't have a pot to piss in. My grandfather threw me out and I was just out there in the wind, but it didn't matter. Keep moving forward. And as I was working hard and as I was doing everything that I could possibly do to get in the game, one day my belief was rewarded. My belief was rewarded and I got that job I always wanted. Now, I hope y'all heard what I just said. I said my belief was rewarded. I could have said my hard work was rewarded. But hard work by itself means nothing. You got to believe. You got to believe when there's nothing to believe in. Anybody can be a hard worker. Truth be told, I know some hard-working dishwashers out there. I know some hard-working people who work fast food. I know some people who work hard, sweeping floors, cleaning toilets, and there's no disrespect to them. But if they believe that that is all that they're going to amount to, if they believe that that is it for them, I'm going to work hard, and at the end of the week, I'm going to get a paycheck, and I'm going to just put food on my family's table, then that's all they're going to get. But if you believe in something greater, 
then you will be rewarded and get more. And I remember when I finally got the bad boy and I got around this little young hotshot dude named Puck. And, you know, we went down there and I automatically had, had in my head that I was a winner. So when I got in there, I thought I was doing my thing from the gate. And I looked at this man and I studied this man. But Puck taught me something without saying a word. He taught me that there was a difference between winning and dominating. There's a huge difference between winning and dominating. And I want y'all to really listen to this right now because Puff dominated the game. And by default, that energy is transferable. As he was coming into the office with that mindset that we got to dominate. I don't just want to make hit records. I don't just want to sell gold albums. I want platinum albums. It ain't good enough for one artist to go platinum. If Big go platinum, Mace better go platinum. If Mace better go, if Mace go platinum, the locks better go platinum. If the locks go platinum, Carl Thomas, Faith Evans, Sean, they better go platinum. And that energy started to rub off on me. I never made a record a day in my life. I never liked the studio. I never was a person that sat in there and tried to make records. But I made number one hits every time them records was cut and they gave them to me. They know I could pass him the rock and he was going to take these records and he was going to make them number one records on the streets, in the clubs, at radio. That's when you know you are greater than a winner. You are dominate. It wasn't good enough for me. I was moving through the industry. Like, I want y'all to understand my competition, street teams, radio, mix, um, mix show promotion, radio people. When I come in the building, our stuff is number one. Y'all fight for number two. Y'all fight for second place. That was the mentality. And it's a huge mentality difference between a winner and somebody who dominates. Leon Spinks, any of y'all know that name? Leon Spinks beat the heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali, to become the heavyweight champion of the world. He's a winner, but you don't talk about him. You don't ever hear that name. Buster Douglas beat the heavyweight champion of the world to become the heavyweight champion. He beat Mike Tyson, but you don't hear about him. Because Mike Tyson dominated the game. Mike Tyson didn't play fair. When Mike Tyson came in that ring, you understood that he was in there for business. This was a guy who was not just trying to beat you, but he wanted to humiliate you. He wanted to put fear in the hearts of people who were sitting outside the ring who was up next. When Mike Tyson hit you with a blow, we would be sitting in the living room in our houses and feel that blow. This is called domination. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to go out there and make a name for yourself doing? Are you trying to just be a winner? Are you trying to just be somebody who put points on the board? Or are you trying to be somebody who dominates? Everybody remembers the name Jordan. It is for a reason. He's the gold standard. He's the person that when they are comparing the greatest of all time, it is not LeBron James, the greatest of all time versus Ron Harper. It is not Kobe Bryant, greatest of all times versus Ron Harper. It is everybody against Jordan. He is the gold standard, but that's the difference. When you dominate, it's a complete difference in mentality. Do you understand? I'm sure all of us have seen two cars on a highway. You in the middle lane, and you're driving down the highway, and off to your left is a Lambo. To your right is a Honda Accord. Now, both of them cars will get you from point A to point B. But one of those cards was made for something different. Just looking to your left, just looking, that Lambo is sweet. That Lambo looks like it's about something. Looking to your right, that Accord might be nice. And you understand that that Accord can go from zero to 100. But when it does, and it gets to 100 miles per hour, and it will get there, but it starts to shake. 
you start to feel that thing. You start to hear wind in the cabin. You start to understand, I better slow down now because this car wasn't built for this. But that Lambo, that Lambo, when you touch the gas on a Lambo, it's, mm, it sound intimidating. It sounds like it was built for something more. And when that Lambo take off and it do zero to a hundred, by the time that it gets to 100, there's no shaking because that's what it was made for. It was built for speed. It was built for domination. It gets to 100 and you understand in that moment, this is why this car was created. What are you playing for? What are you doing? Are you just trying to win or are you trying to dominate? And I love to see people who dominate. I love to see people that once they got their foot on the competition's neck, they won't give it up. Beyonce. Beyonce just made history. 28 Grammy wins, y'all. 28. Only tied with my man Quincy Jones. But understand the difference. Beyonce, when she walk in a room, A-level superstars refer to her as the queen. A-level superstars understand she's number one and we all are fighting for second place. It's a different, it ain't like upstart artists are looking at Beyonce and saying, well, I get it, she's number one because she been doing this for 20 plus years. I'm talking about A-level superstars. Look at Beyonce and say, all hail the queen. It's a reason for that because she is not playing fair. She is not in this game just to have one hit here, one hit there. She is trying to dominate. And this is what we need to do. This is what we need to become. We need to be more than winners. We need to believe that we're more than winners and we need to dominate this game. So for all of my movers out there, this week, today, judge it for what it is. It's a fresh start. Today is a new start for you to change your belief. Today is a new start for you to say, I can be average. I can have a win here and there, or I can dominate the game the choice is up to you movers i don't know about y'all but i ain't come in this thing to be average i didn't come in this thing to get a win here and there i'm trying to win and because y'all are in here with me i know y'all got that same mindset y'all got that same attitude movers let's dominate together y'all I uh, ended there. I like to keep this short and sweet. Hopefully I said something that really inspires and motivates y'all. But this is what we do, y'all. All my movers, all my movers, movers move. Let tonight be that little battery, that, 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 that jet engine that you just put on your back and let it go. Go dominate this week. And I'll catch y'all all on Wednesday night. Check out the new interview with my girl, Dawn Dixon. And I'll see y'all on Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we both on Instagram and we also on Clubhouse. I love y'all and I'll catch y'all on Wednesday night. Peace, y'all.